Would the congregation please rise? When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We join to sing our opening hymn, hymn number 744, Amazing Grace. be seated. Lorraine Ann Wensloff, née Pitzner, passed away on July 13, 2024. She was born June 30, 1929, in Linden Township of Brown County, to Albert and Lydia, née Podratz, Pitzner, and baptized July 21, 1929, by Pastor G. Hinnenthal. She attended St. Paul's Lutheran School in New Ulm, after moving to the Gaylord Farm, she went to Emmanuel Lutheran School and was confirmed on uh, April 18, 1943 at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Gaylord by Pastor H. Winter. She graduated from Gaylord High School in 1947, then finished secretarial training at the Minnesota School of Business in 1948. Lorraine met her hus future husband, Al Ellsworth, uh, Wensloff in early 1945 when she was 15 years old. Al helped build a farm at the Albert and Lydia Pitzner farm. 
They began dating in late 1947 and were married in October 2nd, 1948 by Pastor E. Stalke at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Gaylord. The couple moved from construction job to job as Al was a bricklayer, mason, and foreman. They traveled in a 1949 Pontiac pulling a silver airstream to Grand Island, Nebraska, Huron, Millbank, and Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Totavi, New Mexico, also Monterey, California, Ivanhoe, Minneapolis, Ortonville, and Wilmer, Minnesota. In 1954, they settled on a farm in Dryden Township, north of Gaylord, so their kids could attend school. When younger, they enjoyed dancing with friends and held big farm gatherings with family from uh, Alaska, California, Illinois, Minnesota, North Carolina, New, New York, Ohio, Texas, and Canada. They made trips to visit their kids and families in a variety of places. They helped their kids either build or renovate their homes. They helped Warren with farm work. The couple were Arizona snowbirds for years where they socialized and went sightseeing with family and friends. Over the years, Lorraine worked at McLeod Co-op Power, Midwest Beach, Green Giant Factory in Glencoe, the Finger Hut Corporation of Gaylord, Gaylord Hub as a typesetter for about 12 years, and as an election official and as a census worker. Her church and civic activities included Ladies' Aid, Altar Guild, uh, Dryden Township Clerk, and the Forever Young Senior Center. She was a farm worker, housewife, huge gardener, canned and preserved food, and had an artistic flair with flowers, cacti, and rocks. She enjoyed playing cards, Scrabble and reading. She sewed and mended family clothes and made many patchwork quilts for family and charity. She was preceded in death by parents Albert and Lydia Pitzner, by her spouse Al on their 52nd, 56th wedding anniversary, by brothers Elmer uh, and Grace Pitzner and Fred and Betty Pitzner. She is survived by seven children, 12 grandchildren and 15 great grandchildren. We bow our heads in prayer. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Lorraine. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so that we may see in death the gate to eternal life that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first portion of Holy Scripture that we turn to for comfort and consolation this afternoon is recorded in Acts chapter 4. This also includes uh, Lorraine's confirmation verse. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. For salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name given under heaven by men by which we must be saved. Here ends the reading. And from John chapter 10. These are the words of Jesus, and he says, My sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. 
Here ends the reading. We continue with our next hymn. It is hymn number 570, Just As I Am. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord, our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Your family and friends of Lorraine and especially Anne, Rose, Sue, Ellsworth, Louise, Warren, and Sally. The text that I am going to use for my meditation today uh, is the 23rd Psalm. In the information that I was given uh, from the funeral director, um, from Lorraine, actually, uh, she identified this as her favorite Bible passage. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't suppose there's any passage of Scripture that is more familiar or more loved than the one I just read for you, the 23rd Psalm. And for good reason. For it, perhaps more than any other passage of the Bible, communicates that that deep and abiding sense of, of hope and encouragement that is ours in Jesus Christ. Indeed, what what more comforting image could a person call to mind than that of a shepherd, a good shepherd? A shepherd who never leaves us wanting for anything. A shepherd who always leads us to safe and secure places, to, to lush green pastures and cool, quiet waters, as the psalmist puts it. Indeed, taken as a whole, It is a psalm that that simply exudes peace and tranquility. Yet, as comforting as this passage is, I have to confess that there have been times when there is one verse that has puzzled me a bit, that, that has actually to some degree troubled me. It is the fifth verse, which reads, You prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. Which is to say, in the middle of all of that peace and tranquility, doesn't it strike you as just a little odd, as a little bit out of place, to hear about God spreading a table, setting a dinner table, while surrounded by enemies? After all, Who could enjoy a meal being surrounded by threatening enemies? But of course, that is the whole point of this verse. For you see, since no one could enjoy a meal surrounded by a threatening enemy, it seems pretty obvious that this enemy in whose presence the meal is set must no longer be a threat. Clearly, the enemy in front of who in who we set this, this meal must be a defeated enemy. An enemy who can no longer harm us. A, an enemy that has somehow been rendered powerless. Now, who is this defeated enemy? Who or what is it that was once a threat to us but is no longer? Well, I believe the answer to that is given in the verse that immediately precedes this, verse 4. There the psalmist says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You see, the psalmist is here making it very clear that the, the defeated enemy is none other than death itself. Death is, of course, an enemy that we are all very familiar with, an enemy that all of us contend with all of our lives. The threat of death, especially a a premature death by uh, illness or accident, the kind of death you experienced 20 years ago with Al's passing. That kind of death is a menace. It's a menace that we struggle with all our days. It is that kind of haunting figure in the back of our minds. And at least judging by outward appearances, judging from the fact that we have a a casket sitting in front of us here today, it always seems to be an adversary that wins, that always emerges the victor. In fact, if we're honest, we all have to admit that there's really never a time when when death doesn't have a certain degree of grip on us, both as we think about our own death somewhere in the future and as we deal with the death of those whom we love, as we are doing today with Lorraine's passing. 
But of course, as Christian people, we are not gathered here to wallow in the sadness of death. In fact, quite the opposite, we've come to declare that we are people of hope. Not a wishful hope that somehow death will just go away. Uh, not that we would somehow not have to face it ourselves. Because, of course, unless Jesus returns first, we will all have to face this process that we call dying. No, we have come here today to focus our attention on that sure hope, on that absolute certainty that this menace has been transformed. The absolute certainty that the wolf of death has been defanged. That sure hope that though death will continue to make its presence felt with us in our earthly lives still. It does not now, and it never will again, have the final say in our lives. For you see, the fact of the matter is that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. And because of that, death will never again have the last word in our lives. It will never have the last word because, you see, through faith and holy baptism, we have been joined to Jesus, both in his dying and in his rising. Indeed, his death has become our death. And so, just as Jesus' death is something in the past, so also our death is really something much more a part of our past than it is of our future. For us, for us who are in Christ, for people of faith like Lorraine who are in Christ, death is the defeated enemy. It is the enemy who has been completely crushed, the enemy who has been vanquished. It is the enemy in whose presence God throws a party, a victory feast. Indeed, I think it's safe to say that it's a celebration that, that Lorraine has been anticipating from the time that she was uh, a child. Because you see, when you read her, her confirmation verse from Acts 4, it makes it very clear that it is in Jesus Christ that death is defeated. That verse which says, For salvation is found in no one else but Jesus Christ, for there is no other name, under heaven, given to men by which we must be saved. Indeed, today we too are privileged to join this party. For today we are invited to re remember Lorraine, to remember the fact that despite her many challenges in life, her many struggles, especially in these years since Ellsworth's passing, she is now already enjoying that heavenly feast that will have no end. And what a comfort for us, too, to know that no matter what happens in our lives, no matter, no matter what challenges come our way, no matter what tragedies we encounter, still, we know that the end of our life story is a glorious end, just as it was for Lorraine. What a comfort to know, as Lorraine most certainly did, that our final and greatest enemy, death, has already been defeated, defeated by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Most of you know that it is customary for Christians, at least in this part of the world, to follow a funeral with a lunch. Indeed, I suspect that even as I speak, those tables are being readied for us back in the fellowship hall. But the fact of the matter is that it is more than simple custom that leads us to eat a meal together after a funeral. Fact is, it is an expression of faith. For you see, as we learn from Psalm 23, eating a meal, enjoying a feast, is the most natural thing in the world for us who are celebrating a great victory. When we are proclaiming that the greatest of our enemies has been defeated. And so, when we sit down in a few minutes to share a bit of lunch, 
We remember that it is not, for, not just for social reasons that we do so. It's not just to satisfy our physical hunger. No, we do so to make a statement, a statement of faith. We do so to, exam, to express that same deep conviction that the psalmist expressed, namely, that death is no longer something to be feared. Rather, it has been transformed into the gateway to eternal life, a gateway through which Lorraine has now passed. We do so to express the new reality that the fear of death no longer has control over us, that we too have been freed to live our lives free from the ball and chain of death. In the end, we are able to leave this service here today with a deep and abiding sense of joy, trusting that that same God who supported Lorraine throughout her 95 years will also be there to support us in the days to come. It is in this certainty that we now face our own future, confident that this same God who faithfully led Lorraine to the green pastures and quiet waters of heaven will do the same for us in the end. For he indeed is our good shepherd. He is the one out of whose hand we will never be snatched. He is the one in whom we place our trust, now, in time, and for eternity. Amen. We now join to sing our next hymn, a, a hymn which also calls our attention to the fact that Jesus is the Good Shepherd. It is hymn number 710. Now we make confession of our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed as they are printed for you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, we praise you for the great company of saints who have finished their lives in faith and now rest from their labors. We remember especially our loved one, Lorraine, whom you have redeemed by the blood of your son and received as your dear child through holy baptism. We thank you for giving her to us as a companion to know and love. In your compassion, comfort all who are sad in this hour. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our we praise you for your love in Christ, which sustains us in life and death. In our earthly sorrows, help us find strength in the fellowship of, of the church, joy in the forgiveness of sins, and hope in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our you do not leave us comfortless, but strengthen and care for us through your word and sacrament. You give us family, friends, and neighbors to help when there is loneliness now and in the days to come. Brighten our future with a firm trust in your promises. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant us grace to entrust Lorraine to your never-failing love, which sustained her in this life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and remember her according to the favor you bear for your people. Yes. And now, remove our fears and make us bold to pray with confidence as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Lorraine. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now, let us go forth at peace. In the name of Christ, amen. We join to sing our final hymn. It is hymn number uh, 727 on Eagle's Wings. Mm -hmm. 